Item Number SCP-689 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-689 is to be contained in a large concrete chamber equipped with high-intensity sodium iodide lights. These lights must be wired to separate redundant circuits such that SCP-689 is brightly illuminated at all times. At least three personnel must be on duty at all times within the containment facility. Two Class D inside the chamber and one Level 2 or higher at the operator's station outside the chamber. The operator must either be completely blind or be fitted with a visored helmet sufficient to block all vision, which must not be removed for the duration of this shift. Under absolutely no circumstances the operator to look into the chamber. The Class D observers must between them keep SCP-689 in view at all times without exception. Blinking, etc. is allowed as normal, but there must be at least one set of eyes focused on SCP-689 at all times. If the lights go outside inside the chamber any time, for any reason, or if there is any interruption in observation, all currently extant personnel who have seen SCP-689 must be executed without delay. It is recommended that they be fitted with remotely activated kill devices triggerable from the containment control room. If SCP-689 is known to have left this chamber at any time, retrieval teams consisting of blind or visored personnel equipped with echolocators along with Class D observers must be dispatched to the location of all personnel who have previously viewed SCP-689. Retrieval teams will establish an immediate perimeter and cover the object before returning it to the chamber as quickly as possible. While SCP-689 is in transit, the Class D observers will stand under the covering and keep it in view at all times. Any Level 1 or below personnel who have seen SCP-689 as a result of a containment breach are to be terminated immediately. Higher clearance personnel will be temporarily retained, but in the event of another containment failure, are to be terminated. Requests to study SCP-689 must be submitted to Dr. at least seven days in advance with a detailed description of the proposed experiment and justification. Any researcher directly viewing SCP-689 should be aware that doing so renders them liable to immediate and summary termination in the event of any containment or light failure, as described above. Description: SCP-689 appears to be a small green soapstone statue, 30 cm in height. It is carved in a semblance of what appears to be an unknown deity of the underworld a seated skeletal figure with hands clasped over knees. It was discovered by during one of the pre-war German archaeological expeditions in the area of India and attained after the war by the OSS. Its location during the war is unknown. SCP-689 is completely inert for as long as it is being watched by at least one human being. Normal behaviors such as blinking do not appear to interrupt the watching for this purpose. Any lapse in attention, however momentary, renders the observer vulnerable. As soon as SCP-689 is unobserved, it vanishes from the current location. Within 15 to 20 seconds, one person who has previously viewed SCP-689 dies instantaneously, SCP-689 reappearing on top of their remains. If no previous viewers are presently alive, it reappears in the same place as previous. Tests have established this effect is not operative on animals but that any human being who has ever directly viewed SCP-689 is potentially vulnerable. No consistent cause of death have been found, with autopsy results ranging from heart attacks and strokes to complete rupture of all internal organs. The mechanism by which the victim is selected is currently unknown, save that preference seems to be given to persons in crowds or otherwise surrounded by large numbers of people, presumably to increase the number of people viewing the statue. Recorded images of SCP-689 do not appear to have this property. Due to the potential for a chain reaction once SCP-689 is allowed to leave the chamber, it is considered absolutely critical that all personnel who have seen the object be terminated immediately on any lapse in observation. Addendum: Those with Level 2 security clearance should see Document Number 689-B. Document Number 689-B Proposed Experiment with SCP-682 Following the failure of other options, and given the priority accorded the termination of SCP-682, doctors and have proposed that SCP-682 be deliberately exposed to SCP-689, presumably followed by turning off the lights or a similar measure. SCP-689 staff caution that in the event of a deliberate observation failure, 
All personnel who have seen SCP-689, other than the intended target, must be either terminated in advance or placed in the containment chamber with the intended subject to ensure that the object does not escape containment. Given the apparently random nature of the selection process, it is also likely that multiple trials would be required before the target came under attack. Staff recommends that if such an option is activated, all Class D personnel be terminated in advance of the attempt to improve chances of success.